Increasing your healing mining rewards can be slightly frustrating and maybe even overwhelming. But today, my job is to help you overcome these obstacles and help you get further with these earnings. Now that being said, my name is Gabriel Chaparro, your host on behalf of Rockland. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting with number one, getting high off the ground can increase your rewards exponentially. If you notice on most cell towers, there's a reason why they are so high off the ground. It's so that there's the least amount of obstruction on the way to and from other cell towers. This enables them to create the most amount of coverage. Now being that most of us are in residential areas, you might encounter some obstruction like houses, trees, buildings, apartment complexes, or anything else that you can think of that will get in the way of your signal. Now increasing the height of your antenna as high as you can can get you very far. So let's talk more about how to overcome these obstacles with these next couple tips. Number two, the planning phase. I call this the planning phase because you might have one hotspot or you might have 20, but the planning phase never changes. Now, depending on your location or your locations, key factors that you need to consider are which hotspots you are aiming for, the relative elevation of that area, which we're gonna get into in just a minute. Then lastly, what do you have to do to be able to witness the other hotspots that you're aiming for? Now, ideally, we do always want to overachieve and do the best that we can, but sometimes we just have to work with what you have. But that does not mean that you are at a disadvantage. You just have to get creative. Now, going back to the elevation section that I was talking about, I'm gonna share my screen here. Now, I'm gonna use this as an example. Let's just say that you're right here. This is where your hotspot is and you're planning on aiming to the Woodlands or maybe even Houston, or maybe even uh, down here towards uh, Umble area. The point is that if you can come back over here and I'm gonna drop the link down below for this tool, this is an elevation tool and I have put the blue marker just exactly where we were talking about in that area. And you can start to see the elevation height. So right now we are 30 meters off of sea level. And if you wanna aim for say down here, then we can check out the elevation in that area. Now we can see here that I am below my target area. So therefore I would have to raise my antenna height to just literally be at eye level. I still wouldn't be above it. Now you can type in the meters of your antenna. So 10 meters is 30 feet. So we're gonna type in uh, 30 meters. And then we are almost, you know, just, just a little over. You still have obstruction here. This is why it's a great tool to use to see what kind of obstruction will be in your way uh, for the radio path. Not only can you just plan and find where you want to aim your antenna, uh, but you can also just use this for realistic expectations as to how many hotspots you can be talking to or what you can actually see. This might even help you avoid putting a hotspot in a potentially weak area, or it might give you an indication that, hey, what you're planning might not work. You just need to go 30 feet higher. Now, regardless of how many hotspots you have, whether it's one or 20, you could potentially be hit with the reality that you might need to relocate your hotspot or maybe it's a good place. How do you figure that out? By looking at the Explorer map. You can check out if your area is oversaturated by clicking on this transmit scale down here and you can see the saturation and the reward scale of your areas. All of this goes into the planning phase because maybe you wanna relocate your hotspot to somewhere where there is not enough coverage and you would get rewarded much more. One thing that doesn't change is that most people who have a hotspot probably spent X amount of money. Now, that being said, if you spent X amount of money, then you probably want to receive the most money you can for your investment. This can lead you to facing a reality that maybe co-locating your hotspot could be in your best interest. At the end of the day, what matters the most is the h t coming back into your pocket and giving you passive income. Now guys, as you can tell, I'm super excited and stoked to be bringing this information out to you guys to help the network out and help you get more h t in your pocket. With that being said, guys, if you find this content helpful, please hit the like and subscribe and we will not disappoint you in the next video for sure. Number three, upgrading your antenna. Now this is a given. Many, many channels talk about upgrading your antenna, but it's one of those things where you upgrade your antenna, the people for forget to leave out the cables alongside. Now, when I say upgrade, upgrading doesn't mean that you have to switch the DVI for a higher gain. Yes, in most cases, a higher gain has made a bigger difference than the smaller gain, but that just depends on your location. Now, I can't sit here and tell you that you need to get an eight DVI gain over a three DVI gain, because maybe if you're in the inner city and there are tons of hotspots surrounding you, but there's also buildings in your way, an ATBI antenna will probably not get you many of those witnesses. Conversely, let's say you're in the open and you have line of sight, 
you have nothing really obstructing you an 8 dbi or a 6 dbi might be in your best interest fortunately for you you have a wide variety of selections for you to go through now i do recommend that you start to understand how the antennas work this is something that we will not be covering in this video but it is a huge part for your gains picking your antenna is probably one of the most important decisions when upgrading your hotspot that being said it's one of those decisions where you just want to do it once and not have to troubleshoot back and forth between spending on new antennas and trying them all out it's better to just understand how they work and what benefits you the best now maybe you are not able to do a crazy outdoor antenna and you just have to do something indoors well good thing is that you're not left out of the equation the links will be down below now Rockland has ensured that we have everything that we need to complete our setups including the outdoor and the indoor antennas so if you're looking for an indoor antenna you can come over to Rockland and check out this sturdy based antenna surprisingly people leave out the cables that are involved with upgrading your hotspot upgrading your antenna is actually a two-step process it is not just a one step people sometimes think that they can just upgrade their antenna and expect the greatest results that they could potentially achieve but that is actually false because you can't upgrade the cables alongside your antenna to receive the actual gain that you purchased the antenna for if you're not using the appropriate cable and you have extra length or they're not just well insulated like the stock cables then those cables will have lots of loss so therefore the radio signals that are coming in and out of your antenna are actually going to be diminished they're not going to be as strong now coming back over to Rockland's page we can click on the helium mining tab and you have everything you need all in one place and if you scroll down to the bottom half of the page you can pick the appropriate cables regardless if you have your antenna from here or from any other manufacturer now what I love about this is that they actually give you the display here of what cable you're going to need so without any experience at all you can just look look at the antenna and then compare it to these pictures that they have here and then you can select your cable now the cables do go a long way and it's something that you do not want to overlook number four a relayed hotspot is a lower earning hotspot now there's tons of videos already on how to fix a relayed hotspot but first you want to make sure that you're not relayed if you don't know what relayed is you can just come over to the Explorer app using this guy as an example if you click on the hex that you're in you click on your hotspot on the top left hand side it's gonna say hotspot is relayed expect lower earnings now this is probably the key indication that you are relayed now I say that because once you do your fix with, through the port forwarding, it can take a couple hours, if not maybe even days to potentially weeks on getting this updated. The results do vary, so that's why I say it loosely like that. But uh, we do have a method around this. Just go to portchecker.co. The link will also be down below. But you click on use current IP, type in port number 44158, and then click on check. If it says port 44158 is open, then you're good to go. That's how you know your relayed issue has been solved and you can come back over to the Explorer tab and then wait for this to update. Now Helium has gone as far as letting us know why and how our earnings will be affected if you are relayed. So again, we'll drop this link down below for you to do further research, but this clearly explains to us that if you're relayed, you do not have the speed that is required to send the receipts to other hotspots saying that you witnessed the hotspot. So therefore you could miss out by missing the window of opportunity to send in that receipt, therefore having less earnings. Number five, considering line of sight. And this is what's gonna make it full circle and this is probably the most important detail in making your earnings skyrocket. Now there's a key difference in height of your antenna versus line of sight. For your antenna now I put this one on the back end because now that you understand what you can do to increase your earnings and as to how it works the name of the game ultimately at the end of the day is line of sight now as mentioned in the beginning you could be really high off the ground but you could have something that's in front of you that is blocking your line of sight with other hotspots take a window mounted hotspot say you're pointing in a direction where there are no other hotspots in that direction then you're not going to witness anything and your earnings will remain low now most hotspots come with an omnidirectional antenna meaning 360 degree coverage so let's just say that you're a rock star and you are 30 to 60 feet off of the ground now we can say that you're doing everything in your power to get those gains you might even be splitting rewards with someone for that prime location and understanding the terrain around you can help you polish your strategy what if you're a hundred feet up with a tree install but yet you have a thick forest surrounding you or maybe you have buildings that are 10 or 20 stories tall that are surrounding and engulfing your signals. Now those obstacles will obstruct your gains. Now depending on where these big obstacles are, 
uh, in relevance to your hotspot or the other hotspots that you're aiming for can really deter you from gaining the most HNT. So say you're aiming for a group of hotspots that are over here and your location is right here, then make sure and study the elevation and the landscape so you can be sure that, hey, there's nothing really in the way from me talking to these other hotspots. Now that right there is five ways on how you can increase your helium mining rewards. Now thanks for being here guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.